Hello everyone, in this session we would like to talk about customization in Virtual Lab Fusion. As you may already know, Virtual Lab is packed with various optical objects such as sources, components, detectors, all the list actually goes on. Now there are two possible ways to construct these objects. The first one, which is the easier one, is to use predefined objects. Now these predefined objects are already programmed by programmers so you don't you don't need to worry about anything you just have uh, your input parameters you go ahead you construct your object. Now let's take a Gaussian wave as an instance. Um, here you have your uh, various parameters uh, spatial or spectral parameters you can just go ahead uh, have your input and then you will have your source, right? But things are not always that simple. Uh, there may be cases that you're looking for a, a non-conventional source profile, like a, like a, let's say, like a bat wing profile, something like that. Um, in such certain cases, uh, you're going to need to resort to customization because there are no predefined objects for such uh, strange or non-conventional non sources. Now, you can easily go ahead and uh, either import the external data you have. You just drag and drop it in, in a virtual app. You will have a session. You add the physical quantities. You add various attributes. Then the object is constructed that, that easily. So, that's the first way. Now the second way, which is going to be the focus of this video, is using programmable environments. Um, so you can pretty much program anything in Virtual Lab. And things are, mm, thanks to our uh, snippet technology, uh, things are pretty simple. So I'm going to uh, give you a very rough feeling how things are done. Now. Uh, let's just talk about programming in Virtual Lab, uh, how, uh, how things are. Uh, so the first thing is uh, the programming language. Um, so uh, Virtual Lab is uh, developed uh, based on uh, .NET Framework. So obviously the programming language in Virtual Lab is also C Sharp. Now for those who don't know C Sharp, is pretty close to other C family languages such as C, C++. Now, thanks to its dynamic memory allocation, C Sharp offers a much quicker pace as to development. Um, you will also have access to Virtual Lab Fusion API subroutines and uh, there is also Microsoft.NET Framework. Uh, you, will have, you will have everything that you will need. And if you need more, you can always, of course, import your external DLLs. Now, there are two various type of, of programmable environments in Virtual Lab. Now, uh, I've already brought up snippets. Now, snippets are these nice templates that uh, specify a framework uh, for let's say non-programmers like scientists or engineers to feel comfortable programming. Well, obviously when you want to start programming something you don't want to do any, everything from scratch, right? You just want to have like a whole bunch of things uh, prepared. And let's say if you want to uh, program like a high profile or something like that, you don't need to go ahead and uh, specify uh, mesh parameters like uh, define various classes all you want is to program a certain function which is described by a mathematical statement and then you will return a statement and that statement for example in case of a high profile is a double value now uh, modules are uh, let's say different they are let's say full-fledged projects which are more genetic and um, we won't be talking about it in this video so the focus of this video is snippets so as you saw we had various objects in virtual lab right and 
all of these objects can be program really easily and that's the that's the power of virtual lab there are plenty of things that you have in mind it has crossed your mind for the first time and we haven't had the chance to program it to make it in a way predefined object right so you can just go ahead you don't have to you don't have to wait for us to program everything you can just grab a certain let's say surface and program it or a detector that measures a certain physical quantity and program it so things are pretty flexible and it actually gives you like a lot of power um so let's just go ahead and dive right in and see things in action so this is an optical setup and virtual lab uh, right here you will have the opportunity to uh, drag and drop whatever optical component you might need. So in this case I am trying to uh, program a source with a, let's just make it simple, with a Gaussian profile. And we already know we have a very nice uh, Gaussian wave that uh, that is very uh, user friendly you can just simply set up your parameters as, as you would like to have like uh, spectrals of, of spectral parameters if, if you have uh, let's say a triplet if you want to have like a list then you can of course you, you will have various ways to import uh, your spectral parameters so everything is pretty nicely done but uh, for the sake of argument, let's just say, all right, uh, we want to program a uh, Gaussian profile. Now, if you double click uh, under algorithm, there is snippet. You just need to click on edit and then you will have your code. In this section, uh, the mathematical functions are defined. On the other side here, you will have a set of predefined parameters uh, because as we talked about it earlier, snippets are templates, so uh, plenty of things are already configured so you don't have to worry about anything. Now, there are two sections in snippets. The first one is called a, uh, the main method, and the second one is called snippet body right here in the snippet body you can develop support functions and later on you can make references to that certain function now for this case I don't need to develop any strange function I can just simply do the following uh, obviously we're working with a source so we will be needing complex values by default now since we want to make it a uh, real value I can just go ahead and create the following uh, following variables I will introduce two double variables and I'm going to set the imaginary part to zero and then I will program uh, the Gaussian source in X and Y direction and the rest is a simple multiplication then of course the return value now as you've noticed there is this waste radius and it is nowhere to be found uh, throughout the scope of this code um, so there is this section called glo global parameters right here you can just uh, introduce new parameters you can just add them and simply uh, on, uh, click on edit and specify their physical quantity, the original value, and the range, like from minimum value all the way up to the max. Uh, and the good thing about these uh, variables here is that they are accessible throughout uh, other sessions in virtual labs, such as parametric optimization or parameter run for thresholding. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click OK, and then the parameters which we're 
define this one uh, as a dummy variable. It's not going to do anything. So all these uh, these two variables can be specified in the exterior part. So you don't have to always uh, go in there and change things. It's it's pretty simple if you do it here. Now if I click OK, I can go ahead and grab a camera detector. So I'm going to link it up and I can uh, vary its uh, position or orientation. Uh, so I'm not going to change anything here. The next thing, just to see something pretty cool, I, I can open a new parameter run session. Right here, I can uh, click on next. Here, I'm uh, I'm having all the parameters that are pretty exclusive to this optical setup. And I can just simply type in waste. And these are the two parameters that belong to my programmable source. Now, if I activate this one, this is up for change. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to change it from let's say half a millimeter all the way to let's say 1.5 millimeter and then I'm going to do this in 20 steps right so these are all the steps and I got the uh, fill tracing by default activated and uh, it was right here since it was activated and right now uh, the only detector that is available in my optical setup is camera detector with the following index number. So um, I'm not going to change anything here. Here I just have to click on go. Everything is blazingly fast as you can see. Now one thing that I really like about Virtual Lab is uh, every time you program something, since uh, the infrastructure and the programmable module are built on the same framework things are super performant there is there is like zero uh, let's say delay or uh, performance uh, performance loss uh, when it comes to programming now if I double click here I can I can uh, play this and as you can see I can see things how how things are developing this is of course just a uh, simple use case now there are many cool stuff you can do using programming and what I did was I, I, I just played around a little bit with with a source you can you can do various things with detectors analyzers transmission functions that's it for this video if you enjoyed it give us a thumbs up and if you got questions don't hesitate to reach us be safe out there bye bye